Welcome to Photo Play Paper. I'm Amy Sonneman and today I get to share with you the Maker Series Interactive Explosion Box. I have always been a little intimidated by the Explosion Box because it looks really complicated. And then when I started playing with the Explosion Box kit, I realized that there's only a few steps and everything is cut for you. So the hardest part of making an explosion box is the cutting. Putting it together is the fun part. So Photoplay Paper has allowed you to have the pieces already cut and all you have to do is decorate and have fun. So today we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to assemble the explosion box, what's inside, and a few tips for decorating and kind of giving you some sizes that might work best for you as well. Let's go ahead and get started. I will first show you what the explosion box looks like when you open it up, and then I will show you all of the pieces that you should have in your kit. So when you open it up, make sure that you don't fling them across the room. I'm saying that because I did that not because it's a joke. Um, yeah, I ended up having to search for the little tiny pieces underneath my desk. So note to self, don't open it and fling it open, open it gently. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you what's inside. This is the completed explosion box. Okay, it's not decorated obviously, but when you open the lid, you have all of these fun elements that you can decorate. You can put pictures in, you can add notes to, you can decorate with fun inspirational sayings, all kinds of unique things that you can build into this box. Perfect for a wedding, for Mother's Day with great pictures of grandkids stuffed inside of each of the pockets, as well as a baby gift for the mom-to-be or for grandma. Wouldn't this be cute for grandma and have it all decorated with baby pictures? Because let's face it, the best gift you can give a grandma is pictures of their grandbabies. So that's kind of where we're at with all of the pieces. Each piece folds into the other. So you actually have three separate boxes that create the main box. So you fold it up push in your little middle piece, which when I was, if I were decorating it, I would have probably tied this down with a little cute ribbon or something so that it wouldn't pop out. And then when you close it all up like this, you just kind of fit the lid back on like so. How cute is that? So let me show you how easy it is to create this fun explosion box. Like all of the Maker series, the instructions are on the inside of the packaging, so be sure not to throw away the packaging. So you have all of your steps on the packaging. If you flip the packaging over, you can see this beautiful picture of one actually decorated to give you kind of some inspiration. Um, you can kind of look at it and go, oh, that's what that is supposed to look like finished. That's super helpful. I also wanted to show you that the explosion box comes both in black and white. So if your paper lends itself better to a black background, we have that available for you as well as the white background. As an added bonus, we also gave you another example of a different paper line that you can decorate with. So just to kind of give you two samples of what can be done and how cute it can look and what you can put inside, there's also a QR code down here in the corner, so if you want more ideas, be sure to scan that and check that out as well. The Explosion Box Kit makes a 4x4 box. When you open your kit up, you're going to have a few pieces that I want to share with you. You're going to have the base piece, which is going to make the outside of the box. That's the largest piece in the box, and that starts with step number one. This is the second piece, and this will be for step number three, and it gives you the little pockets with the thumb notches. That will nest inside of the first piece I just showed you. The third piece starts step number six. It's a smaller version of step number one that gets nested inside of step number five. 
Now that'll make sense when I kind of start putting it together, but each of the pieces are a little bit smaller than the one before it. And that's really all you need to know. As we get them finished, we'll go ahead and add them one at a time and it'll make perfect sense. You'll have one piece that looks like this and it is the lid. So that will be the piece that kind of brings it all together. You'll have one of the long strips that is folded and it goes right in the center that will be the piece that can pop out at you. And then you'll have four pieces that look like this. And these are the hinges that go with steps three and four. Kind of to give you a little extra room to add pictures and maybe a little bit thicker items into the pockets on the second layer. Now that'll make sense in a few minutes as well. The next piece for me is probably the hardest piece of the whole entire project and that is just adding your adhesive to each of the pieces so that you can assemble it. And that doesn't sound very hard at all, does it? It really isn't, so hang in there. It's super easy and totally fun. I want to show you kind of the supplies that I use as well. Not many supplies are used in the creating of this box. I use either the easy tear tape or the super tape. Typically I use the easy tear tape because I can literally tear it into strips and it's totally easy to do. But because I want you to see where each of the pieces of tape belong, I'm using the Thermoweb iCraft super tape just because it's red instead of white. If I did white on white, you wouldn't be able to see it very well. So I'm gonna use the Extra Strong iCraft Super Tape, which is a fabulous product and it will stand the test of time as people open and close this box. The tear tape is permanent and does a great job as well. It just depends on how much handling of the box you think it's gonna need. You know, if your kids are gonna be handling it, you might wanna go with the super strong stuff. If your mom or daughter or grandmother is going to be using it, then the easy tear tape would be fine. I always have a pencil. I use the X-Acto knife to help remove the backing of the adhesive. And then I have a bone folder that I can crease all of the score lines so that they're nice and smooth. I also use a one inch hole punch that you will use for one of the pockets. And other than that, you're just gonna need a paper trimmer to be able to decorate your explosion box. So let's get started. We're gonna start with step one. You're gonna lay the largest piece, which is the outer base, flat on your work surface with the bumpy side score lines facing you. So if you run your finger across the score lines, you should feel the bump. So those are gonna be facing up towards you. Then we're gonna apply one quarter inch adhesive along the triangle edges of the four pre-cut slits. When they're talking about pre-cut slits, they're talking about these. And basically what we're gonna do is this is going to be our pocket. So we're gonna go ahead and take our adhesive and the adhesive is going to be along this side of each of the slits. Okay, let me show you how that looks when it's all finished. So as you can see, we've got our tape in the spots here. I'm gonna fold all of these flaps inward to make our diagonal pocket. This is where you just wanna kind of line it up on that score line and then rub down your edge. Because sometimes in packaging or whatever, these can be a little wonky. So just kind of make sure it's square. Go ahead and fold all of your pockets and rub down your score line. So as you can see, these are gonna be the pockets that you will be the outside of your box. So this is gonna be the outer edge of your box when you fold it up, if that makes sense to you. We're gonna also fold the score lines in to create the bottom of the box. And I do that before I actually adhere everything. just so that I know it's lined up correctly and that it's all square, each piece is square. And you do that with the edge right here. Once I know it's square, then I just rub it down. 
Now we're just going to go ahead and assemble each of the pockets. We're going to take the adhesive off of the triangle side and we're just going to pull that over and because you already scored it, it's going to go down really nicely. I do just rub it a little bit to make sure that it's adhered well. So go ahead and do that to all four sides. Now that I have my pockets glued down, I'm just going to give it a good rub with my bone folder to make sure the adhesive is nice and secure. So you're going to now lay the second largest piece flat on your work surface with the bumpy side of the score lines facing you again. So I laid this down, not the bumpy side up. So I'm going to flip that over and double check that the bumpy side is facing you. So the score lines, you'll feel the bump on the score lines. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to fold all of our score lines. So we're going to take each of the pieces and we're just going to fold them over, doing the same thing, kind of making sure that your edges line up so your pocket looks nice. And then just run it over with a bone folder like so. And for me, the most important piece is to make sure that this part is lined up correctly. If it's off, just kind of give it a little nudge and then refold it where you need it to be. Okay. So now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and fold in the center lines as well, doing the same thing, making sure you're lined up nicely on the score lines at the two sides that you can see here. Just go ahead and do that. And if it's off, just give it a little nudge and rescore it. This makes sure that your box is square all the way around. So our, we still have our bumpy side up and we've went ahead and scored and folded all of our pieces. Now we're going to go ahead and add our tape. So we're going to add our tape to the outside of the score line. So if you can see, when you fold it, you don't see the score lines. It's on the outside of each of those score lines, on the full piece without the notch. So go ahead and add your tape there. And again, we're creating these pockets. So eventually your pocket is going to look like this. We're going to go ahead and set this piece aside just for a minute. Remember those small pieces that I said easily fly out of the package? We're going to take those pieces and we're going to make sure that the bumpy side is down because we're going to add adhesive to the flatter side. So go ahead and find those, place them bumpy side down, and we'll add our adhesive. When you're finished adding adhesive, it should look like this with tape on either side of the score line. Next, we're going to take each of those pieces and we're going to fold into the bumpy side. So we're going to place the adhesive side down and fold inward. And then just rub each of those pieces with your bone folder to make a nice crease. And do that to all four of them. We're going to bring in our pockets again. And we're going to use those pieces, and they call them connector pieces, to create the opposite edge of the pocket. So we've got the bottom of the pocket adhered, but now we need to adhere the edges of each of those pockets. And what this does is it gives you a little bit more room, because if I were to go ahead and just glue this side down, you would end up with more than a quarter of an inch of space in that pocket that you couldn't use. So what this does is it allows you to use the majority of that pocket because you've now given it a space or a slot to slide into. So what we're going to do is we're going to adhere each of those pieces to the outside 
of each pocket. Okay, so they're going to look like this. And basically this piece will come down and glue the pocket together and you'll have room to add a little bit bulkier items inside of your pocket because this gave you more room. Okay, so you're going to line those up on the edges. I'm going to get really close so you can see. I'm going to take one of the pieces and I'm just going to kind of see how that's going to line up. And it might be easier to see if I fold this over, but I want that as close to the edge of that pocket without going over, meeting it edge to edge. So it's easier for me to work with it. I'm going to rotate it each time this way. So let's go ahead and add the first one. I'm not going to press it down yet. I'm just going to kind of slide it in where I want it to go making sure that it's even where I want it and then when it's exactly where I want it then I'm going to press it down. I'm going to do that to each of the sides. When it's in place, give it a good rub. Side number three is ready and let's work on side number four. So if you did it correctly, you'll have a hinge on each side so that when you fold your flap over you have your adhesive on two of the sides to form your pocket. Let's go ahead and remove the adhesive and tape the pockets down. So I removed my tape. I know that it's square because I already scored it before. And you just rub your pockets down. Now, I know I've said this before in other Maker Series videos, but if this is your first time watching, if you get your adhesive in the wrong place, do not try to pull it up. Just grab some undo and, you know, kind of put your undo on it, remove the tape, let the paper dry because the undo will be a little wet, but it'll dry quickly and then start over again. Whatever you do, do not try and pull this tape up because this stuff is like iron. It will not give up its adhesive very easily. Okay, so there's pocket number two. When you're finished, it will fold up like this and it fits beautifully in the middle of the first box we made, like so. So that's your second set of pockets. Let's work on the third. This is the smallest piece to create the last pocket inside of your box. And what you're going to do is you're going to lay that down, bumpy side facing you. So when you rub your hand over it, you're going to feel the bumps and the score lines. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same thing we did in steps one and two to create the four slash pockets. Okay, so it's just like the first one we did, it's just smaller. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to score all of our pockets and we're going to line them up to make sure that they're nice and straight and even. We're 
we're going to open it back up and then we're going to make sure that the bottoms are square and that they fit nicely inside of the score lines because you don't want a wonky box. Now that we have all of our score lines folded, we're going to go ahead and add our adhesive. Just like in the first step, we're going to put the adhesive on this side. So it's going to create your pocket and the glue is going to glue it down on the bottom to create your pocket like so. So you're going to add your adhesive here, 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 and here. And as a sanity check, I'm like, okay, so that goes over here and I'm just gluing the bottom of the slash pocket. So once you've done that, we'll go ahead and assemble the pocket. Now that I took my adhesive off, I'm gonna go ahead and just place those pockets where they belong. Once I adhere down each of the pockets, just give it a good rub. Then you know the adhesive is secure. This piece is going to lay down centered in the bottom of the one before it. So it's going to look like this as you're working on it. Now the one thing that I recommend is that you decorate this piece before we go to the next step. Or at least don't glue it down until you decorate this piece, because otherwise it's, you're gonna end up peeling it up and not gonna be happy with yourself. The next piece we're gonna work on is the lid. You're gonna lay the lid flat on your work surface with the bumpy side down or facing away from you, which is opposite of everything we've done prior to this, but we wanna put the adhesive on to make sure the outside of the box looks perfect. Remember we always fold our paper to the bumpy side, like towards the bump. So when it's laying flat with the bumpy side down, your score lines are gonna look like this, okay? But you're only gonna put adhesive on these four little pieces, the flaps. When you're done, your adhesive will look like this. And I put a lot of adhesive on the lid because that's what's gonna get opened and closed a lot, and probably take more wear and tear than any of the other pieces, I'm guessing. So I put a lot of adhesive, so I was absolutely positive that they were not gonna come apart. And I did the sanity check before I pulled the adhesive off. So I'm like, okay, my lid is supposed to go down like this. Okay, yes. I got my adhesive in the right spot, my lid looks good, I can go ahead and assemble. So let's do that. It takes longer to put the adhesive on and take the adhesive backing off than it does to assemble this whole thing. Which is kind of nice, it takes away the intimidation factor. Because I gotta tell you, I thought they were so cool, but I thought I, there's no way I'm going to have the patience to cut that and make sure I don't mess it up and then you have to decorate it and I just, it wasn't something that I thought I would ever tackle and then I started putting this box together and went, oh my gosh, that is so easy. Go ahead and take all of the adhesive off at the same time. We're, not, we're going to do them piece by piece, but we're going to make sure that the adhesive is all off so it's easily assembled. Now that we've removed all of the adhesive, okay, so I flip it back and make sure my corners are at a perfect angle and then I bring in the adhesive part. 
because I, I want the lid, the squarer the lid is, the better the project's going to go together, if that makes sense. So again, kind of pull that back so you don't get it glued in the wrong spot. Put your corners together. And then adhere. And do the last one the same way. And now you have your lid. So now you have your three inside pieces. You have your lid complete. The only thing left to do is to fold the explosion part that comes out of the center. So grab your long strip. And if you notice, there's one side that isn't as long as the, the other piece. We're going to take this piece and start there. So we're going to fold in and back. And this is where I, again, straighten up my edges, make sure that it's nice and square. If I have a problem, I fix it now with a bone folder. And then you know it's square when you adhere it because you want it to look nice in the center. See how that's a little bit off? A little bit... I just make sure it's square. It takes a little bit of muscle to do it, but it's totally worth it in the end. Okay, so I got that square. Just give it a good rub with your bone folder to know that it's not going to shift in the end. See how that's a little off center? I'm just going to pull it back and force it to be centered. And then just give it a good rub with my bone folder. And do the last piece. It's nice and square, and you're ready to assemble. Now that we have all of the pieces ready to do the final assembly, we'll go ahead and start that. You have the lid, which is ready to go. You have the accordion little booklet that's going to be attached in the middle at the very end. And you have the three nested boxes. I'm going to have you pick up the top two boxes and put the base box aside for now. We're just going to be working with the two inside boxes. Right now we're going to go ahead, you can see the pockets and the little thumb holes, we're going to flip those over. And we're going to add our adhesive to just the center portion right here. So go ahead and add your adhesive to those two pieces. Your pockets should look like this after you apply the adhesive to just the center section. Now that we have each of the three pieces with adhesive on them, we're going to go ahead and stack them and permanently adhere them. We're going to go ahead and set the smallest piece aside. And we're going to work with the second largest piece. We're going to take the adhesive off and we're going to center this in the middle of this square. So go ahead and take the adhesive off. Knowing that this adhesive is super strong, you're going to want to make sure that you are centered top to bottom and left to right before you set this down. So kind of adjust as you need to, top to bottom, left to right, and when it looks good, go ahead and place it down. Once you've placed it down, take your bone folder and just run over where that adhesive is to make sure it's nice and secure. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the smaller piece and adhere it to the center. So go ahead and take your adhesive off and we'll go ahead and adhere it. Do the same thing. Adjust it top to bottom and left to right so that it's even before you place your box down. When you're happy with it, gently put it in place and rub your adhesive down. So now you have your box and the lid that goes like this. So you have your box complete. Pull the lid off and all the fun things happen. The last piece is your accordion book. Before you adhere your accordion book, 
I would recommend going ahead and decorating the bottom with whatever patterned paper that you would like because once you adhere this down you're not going to be able to decorate the bottom. As you open this piece up you're going to notice that one side is shorter than the other. You're going to put your adhesive on this short side. So go ahead and do that. Now you should have your adhesive on this side. I like to go ahead and place a little piece of twine around my book to keep it closed. So this would be where you would want to add that. So go ahead and cut your piece of twine and get that ready and just secure it down. Now obviously at this point you would probably have your book all decorated and add this piece very last. But you're going to want this to stay closed. And I'll show you before I add my bow I want to make sure that it's going to open from left to right here. And I'm going to glue it down in the center of this piece. And my bow isn't super tight but you get the idea. Okay, so it'll look like that. Your sides will fold up. Your top will go in. Then your box will look like that. When you open it, all the fun happens. At the very end, you're going to want to do something to secure this little pop-up piece so that it doesn't look all floppy. You can also make this piece say so you don't have enough pictures or pieces that you want to fill all of the little squares on the pop-out piece, just trim it to make it look like, you know, if you want six or you want four, trim it to the length that you would like. We gave you lots of room to be able to expand or trim some off if you don't need them all. Now you have four slash pockets on the outside in the largest box. You have four thumb pockets in the second layer, and then you have another set of slash pockets on the inside layer. We've had a lot of people ask, what are the sizes? If I'm going to decorate, what are the sizes that I need to decorate? So since I don't have one to show you yet that is complete, I went ahead and cut things down to show you how it would look and give you sizes, because I think that's most important. We will show you finished projects on our Facebook and Instagram page, so kind of keep an eye out there as well for inspiration. Now that you have your blank piece, you'll notice that you'll want to decorate not only the outside, but the inside of your pockets to make it look fun. So the largest pocket, the very outside that forms the box, if you cut your paper three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths, your paper will look like this with just a little hint of the white showing on either side. If you would like just a little bit more white showing, go ahead and cut your square three and six eighths by three and six eighths. That'll give you just a skosh more white space around the edge. It's a personal preference. It's what you like. So you're going to need five of those pieces to cover the outside of the box as well as the bottom. Okay? If we look at the inside piece, which has this slash pocket, okay, we're going to cut the same size as we did on the outside. But what we're going to do to add our pattern paper here is we're going to take the same size square but we're going to take our trimmer and we're going to cut it diagonally. When you're finished you're going to have two pieces on either side of that slash pocket. But you're still going to get that little white border. Now if you want a little bit more that's fine. Normally you probably wouldn't use the same piece of paper on the top and the bottom but this just gives you an idea. So you're going to do that for all four of those sides and make that look so beautiful. The next piece we'll be working with is the one with the thumb hole. So first you're going to want to do the outside. You're going to need four squares. 
that will fit on the outside of each of those pieces. Those pieces are 3 and 3 eighths by 3 and 3 eighths, which will give you just a skosh of white around the edge. If you want more, go 3 and 2 eighths by 3 and 2 eighths to give you just a teeny bit more white, maybe like that. It's totally personal preference. It's what you like and what makes you happy. You're going to need four of those for the outside and you're going to need four for the inside. Everyone's going to ask, okay, what do I do for that thumb hole? How am I going to make that thumb hole look nice and not all jagged when I cut it with scissors? I knew you were going to ask it, so I'm going to give you a tip. One of the tricky things that I wasn't sure how I was going to figure out is how to lay my paper over the top and still get a nice round thumb hole because I don't want it to look all jagged as I cut it with scissors. I did a little engineering with it and realized that this is a one inch circle punch. So if you have a one inch circle punch in your stash, I always keep one unassembled just for measurements and I'll write all my measurements on one that's unassembled to make building the next one easier. So what I did is I laid one piece down so that I could see where this was going to go on the inside. I flipped it over and I'm like, okay, that's good. Then I just marked it with my pencil where that round piece was going to land. All right, so eventually it will look like this. But I don't want it to be butting up against that. I want a little bit of white showing like I have all the way around the outside. So as I played around with it, I took my one inch hole punch and I saw where my circle was or half circle and I just punched a little bit past where that circle pencil mark was. It might not be perfect every time, but it's definitely going to be better than if I tried to cut it with scissors. So then when I go in, then when I go in, it's going to give me a better circle. It's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than what I was able to do with a pair of scissors. And scissors work fine too, if that's what you want to do. So I, this is just another way to get a nice even half circle. Now when you glue those down, and you're going to need four of those. Now when you glue them down, you're going to also have just this little piece do it this way. Now you're going to have a little bit of white showing around the thumb hole as well. And I just like that better. So that was the first tip that I was like, how am I going to do that and make it look good? So you're going to need four of those pieces. And if you want to do your thumb hole, do your thumb hole before you actually adhere this piece to make it into a pocket. That would be super helpful. Next, we're going to work with the last box. And we're going to go ahead and cut papers, just like we did in the very largest box. They're just smaller. So this is step six. And you're going to cut that paper to two by seven eighths and two by seven eighths. And this is where you're going to want to add your piece here. as well as here. So you're going to need five of those pieces because you definitely want to add whatever piece you're going to put here before you add your little booklet. Again, this piece will be cut to two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. We're going to deal with the slash pockets in the same exact way. We're going to take four pieces that are two and seven eighths and we're going to cut them in half. We're going to cut along the diagonal to give you the decoration for the slash pockets. 
Obviously, you'd use different papers for each one to make it more fun, but this gives you an idea of what it's supposed to look like when it's together. Okay, so that is the inside as well as the outside of that third box. So to decorate the inside and the top of the box, you're going to need a piece of paper that is four by four, and that will give you that nice thin edge around the outside. If you want a thicker edge, try cutting your paper to three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths, and you're going to get something that looks more like that. It's a personal preference. Try it. Use scrap paper to see what you like better. Whatever makes you happy, that's what you should go with. You'll also want to decorate the sides of the lid. You're going to want to cut pieces four inches by one and three eighths. You're going to need four for the outside, which would look like that. And if you want to decorate the inside, which I think you probably might, you're going to need eight of those. So depending on whether you want to decorate the inside and cover up where you glued, you're going to need eight pieces to decorate the lid sides. So I hope that gives you a fun explosion box to be able to create great gifts for kids, for moms, grandma, Father's Day, Mother's Day, the holidays for a birthday. Wouldn't this be beautiful for your kids who are in college? and do a birthday surprise box filled with gift cards so that you know that they're eating well at least once in a while. I thought that would be kind of fun. That's what I'm gonna do maybe for Christmas and put gift cards in because my kids are of an age that they don't need anything, but it sure is helpful to have a gas card when you know funds are low or a grocery store card or even a gift card for their favorite restaurant. Lots of options super easy and fun to assemble and decorate. I hope that helps give you a few ideas and inspiration to be able to create your own explosion box. Please leave a message in the comments. If you have any questions, we'll try and answer those. I appreciate you stopping by today and have a great day.